Shall I? Yes, please. All right. So uh, my name is Alexandru Ichim, Ichim, however you want to pronounce it. I'm uh, towards the end of my PhD in the Computer Graphics Lab at UBFL in Switzerland under the supervision of uh, Mark Pauli. And I've been working with uh, Federico for a while on, uh, on fun PCL things, um, which I'm going to present today. So the, the big title of the presentation would be Semantic Parametric Body Shape Estimation from Noisy Depth Sequences. So in other words, we, we've put together a framework for articulated body tracking and modeling. Um, and I'm going to get into the nitty gritty in a sec. Uh, before I get there, I'm going to shamelessly present some of my other work. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the main focus of my PhD is uh, body modeling, um, specifically faces. So the stuff related to PCL is somewhat of a, of a separate side thing I'm doing. Um, this was my, my first paper, which was published at SIGGRAPH uh, 2015. So it's basically we wanted to model uh, the human face using just the phone. So what we're doing is a few steps. Uh, so we're uh, <laughs> getting um, a 3D scan of the face by taking a lot of pictures. And then we're also taking um, a video of the person freely, freely, very important, freely doing expressions. So the idea would be to cover as much of the expression space as possible. But there's no script. So the guy just smiles, eyebrows up, eyebrows down, and so on. Um, so using just this data, we managed to reconstruct 3D avatars that we can then animate. So this is an RGB feed, um, RGBD feed, uh, where we track the face. And then these are avatars created only with the phone, and they are animated from um, the RGBD feed. So as you can see, every single person has uh, different expressions. They have different wrinkles that appear. Um, there should be some sound. Course work for the AI. And uh, it was really exciting. Nice. Yeah. Um, it was a very hard assignment, but yeah. So yeah, we model we mo model the color of the eyes, we model the teeth, sleep, uh, we do not model the hair. That's all right. It was definitely worth it. Je dois dire que je suis vraiment très content de pouvoir participer aux expériences. J'ai failli dire le nom. Bien qu'il fasse pas du tout beau. Oh, you sort of got the point. The, 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 main, the main idea here is that everything is, is, is on the phone. So the whole construction is done for that. And that was like uh, the big selling point. So you have uh, multi-view stereo, you have TV face tracking, shading, shading, all sorts of techniques um, put into that. Um, next, a uh, paper that, that got accepted recently at uh, Computer Animation Conference. Um, somewhat continues on the same idea, but right now um, I started looking into how to incorporate physics priors into modeling and animation. So in this case, we're using the volumetric model of the face, where we, it's, it's still an abstracted model, so we have a skull and the rest is just flesh, we call it flesh, so there are no muscles, no fat, no anything. And what we managed to do now is we present a full pipeline, starting from uh, 3D scans up to, the, up to the animation, that uses um, a somewhat novel optimization framework um, called projective dynamics. Um, and we basically put all the, all the steps of the facial modeling, um, the static modeling, dynamic modeling, and the animation. And here I'm basically showing a nice neat example. So we are the first ones that managed to take facial surface facial scans like this and basically do the reconstruction while taking care of collisions inside and volume preservation and all sorts of other physical properties. So while we actually reconstruct the face, we take care that the teeth do not intersect with the lips. Um, so until now, if you just do surface registration, you're going to get things like this, where the lips interpenetrate. Um, and we now manage to, to slide them together and understand what's happening basically inside the surfaces. And this improves the, the animation quality quite a bit. On on the animation side of things, um, here you have an example with the usual techniques. I'm not going to go into detail. They're called linear blend shapes. And here is our volumetric technique that basically does a full physics simulation during the, the animation stage. So we, man we managed to 
uh, without any sort of artist intervention to take care of nice chewing motions of the mouth where the lips never intersect and they slide nicely together um, and kissing shapes which are notoriously difficult in the animation industry like stuff like this where the lips do not intersect um, yeah let's build time let's watch this. <laughs> I have enough time okay, we play. All right. so there will be some more interesting things can I right. So with this, we can uh, we can do interactions with external objects while taking care of the anatomy of the face. So the guy gets very slowly punched into into his face, uh, but the, uh, the skull parts do not uh, do not deform, and it takes care of, of everything inside. So the and you can do it while animating. So it would be directly applicable to games and so on. And of course, you can extend this to all sorts of complicated physics stuff where you um, take fractures into consideration and fracture different materials of the face in a different way. So the whole gist of, the, of this is that we, we are the first ones to split uh, the head into multiple materials and actually understand them during, during the animation stage. So here the guy talks while the lips are being held. So this, again. So this again, no, no, no animator touched this. So we take an animation of the guy talking and we just apply some additional constraints in the physics simulation and get this. Uh, what else? Yeah, we can now simulate uh, inertial effects. Again, no artist involved. <laughs> so you can get all sorts of effects. So you see the, the, the lower part of the mouth is, is lagging behind. Here we added more mass in the nose so you can get all sorts of crazy effects. And it's like a wobble. Um, right. So this is sort of what I'm excited about these days and continuing to work on that. Now back to the actual topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my work was Federico. We, we tried to build a generic framework for tracking and modeling articulated bodies. And our actual paper <coughs> that was submitted uh, to RAM this year. Russ. Russ, sorry. <laughs> under uh, Matteo's uh, chairing. Um, so we only applied it to human bodies and we only used RGBD input. But it can be extended to, to, to any sort of skeletal templates and uh, depth data. So we're not using any RGB right now. So like I said, it can be applied to hand tracking, animal tracking, and all sorts of other things. So the essence of it is the body representation. So we used um, a skeleton that we get from another uh, open source project called Make Human. Uh, so basically what that skeleton allows us to do is allows us to get pose variations of the body by changing the joint angles. And also this skeleton comes with a surface on top that is linked via linear blend skinning to the, to the skeleton. And on top of that, so this is useful for the tracking bit. And then for the modeling bit, we have rest pose variations, which are obtained via uh, changing the bone lengths inside the skeleton, and then applying linear blend skinning and getting the different effects. And also on top of that, we have um, a set of blend shapes for the A pose, where you can make um, the guy look different by you know, adding a belly, making his left hand thicker, and so on. So these are individual blend shapes that you linearly combine and get different body shapes. Um, so like I said, you can, uh, if you have such a template for a hand, you could just apply that directly for a hand, for example, or for a cat or whatever. Um, now for the, for the actual registration bit. So like I said, the framework is both tracking and modeling. So for the tracking part, we have all this big optimization that we solve. Um, so it has five different energies, and I'm going to go into more detail about each one of them separately. So we, we begin with, uh, with the features. So these are basically um, 2D or 3D feature features. In this case, it's, it's 3D with this formulation. We use the old night landmark detector. So this is basically just used to, to initialize our body for uh, our body po pose for each frame. And then we have usual point-to-point uh, -point, 
advanced closeness, which is done using the, the standard ICP iterations. So these are the, the first two terms in our optimization. Next, uh, something that we found to be very, very important, especially if you use the noisy uh, connect data. Um, so our bodies were usually at two, three meters from the, from the sensor. So over there, the point to plane is a bit useless because everything is flat. So you cannot really see the, the, the contour of the body. So you can't really lock the body. For tracking, it would work. But for the modeling part, basically everybody was fat when we modeled people because you just see flat everything. And when you try to fit the, the model, it's just going to try to make the whole body wider and wider and wider. So for this, we used uh, contours um, in 2D. So basically what we do is we apply uh, gradients in 2D and basically say that around the, the depth contour of the body, uh, we do point to plane where all the normals are, are pointing perfectly orthogonal to the viewing direction. Um, this, of course, can be extended by using any sort of fancy RGB segmentation and using those contours in there. But we just did depth in our case. Um, then um, another energy that proved to be quite useful in our optimization is um, what we call the statistical post prior. So this is made of, of two different constraints inside. Um, so the idea here is that we have uh, a training set where a person just changes poses in front of, uh, of the camera and we use uh, the, uh, some other ground troops tracker to, to basically generate um, PCA models for all the joints of the body. And then we use these two energies to regularize our own tracking. So I'm sorry for the projector. So basically, the first energy measures the distance between our current pose estimate and the PCA subspace. So it's basically going to try to measure this distance and to, to minimize it. So we want to be as close to uh, the PCA subspace projection as possible. And then the second one will basically try to keep our projected pose as close as possible to the mean, weighted by the inverse of the standard deviations that we get from, uh, from our PCA model. And then at the very end, we have a smoothness term, which basically says that you know, um, the previous frame, the current frame should be close to the previous frame in terms of uh, joint angles. Now switching to the, to the modeling energy. So the idea here is that we can do, this is where uh, we can play with, with trade-offs between performance and quality. So we can do the tracking at each frame and then every now and then, maybe on a separate thread, or maybe on the same one, we can basically reset the template that we're using for tracking. And we do that by accumulating surface and contour constraints that we see throughout a certain window of, of tracking frames. And then we recompute the, the blend shape weights for the rest pose of our body. Um, an additional term that appears here in the modeling energy is the blend shape regularization term. And we experimented with two terms, one using an L2 norm and one using an L1 norm. And of course, we get different <laughs> effects, uh, which I'm going to show in the next slide. So like, like I said, we accumulate constraints over windows of frames. And we solve and update the body template shape. And then we continue the tracking with an improved body shape. So the idea would be that after you know, a, few, a few frames, you're going to get exactly the, the body of the person. So the system is going to adapt to the body of the person. And the tracking is going to be um, much better, theoretically. Or depending on how you implement this, you can do multiple passes offline to the same um, uh, tracking uh, data set and just improve improve the body modeling until we get the perfect tracking. Right, so um, now um, about the L2 and L1 uh, regularization that I mentioned before. So this is our average uh, template model that we start with. So all the blend shape weights are zero. And now we do an L2 fitting over a window of frames. And what you can see here is that basically, first of all, you get negative blend shape weights which doesn't really have any, any sort of meaning. Um, and another problem is that a lot of them are being activated. So for example, if, if you want to extract some sort of semantic information out of this, it would be very, very hard because basically this guy is, um, you can see it here. So 
So here we're, we're actually doing what we call word cloud visualization. So each blend shape has a name. And here we visualize all the blend shapes that are activated for this guy. So you can see all sorts of random things that you cannot really, um, you know, everything combined doesn't have a, a semantic meaning because at the same time you have like his skin in the upper arm and then his fat in the upper leg and then he's like something else somewhere else. Um, with the L1 norm, what you basically obtain is a sparse description of the guy. So the fitting is going to be a bit worse, of course, but um, you get the much more compact description of the, guy, uh, of the guy's uh, body shape. So right now, by looking at our word clouds, you can, you can understand things a bit better and you can sort of get a rough um, description of the person you saw. Of course, these names can be tweaked a bit better. These are the names we got from MakeHuman. So MakeHuman is this big, big application with sliders where you can generate different uh, body shapes. So we just made the sliders blend shapes and we, we just used them in our system. <coughs> and now for the results set. Um, so the code is, until this starts, the code is available on GitHub. Ah, come on. Come on. So it wasn't a double blind submission, so we could use our own bodies. <laughs> <laughs> so here is after the, the so we, we tracked the whole sequence and then we did the modeling step and then we tracked it again. And basically now the, the, the template changed. Yeah. I'm not I'm ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> not enough. <laughs> <laughs> so now the guy is becoming fatter and fatter. To, to match my uh, my body shape, <laughs> right? Um, so this is one example of how you can apply this. Uh, if you engineer it enough, you could basically do the, the the modeling thing on a separate thread in the back and just feed it to the to the tracking. Um, yeah, this is actually online tracking and modeling. So at each frame, we both uh, model and track. So you can see the blend shape sort of fluctuate a bit. Let's see if we have anything Yeah, this is the contour. So here you can actually nicely see why the, ah, I'm sorry. So here you can actually nicely see why the, the modeling bit is quite important. So when we just use the average template that we start with, the contours are quite off. So here you see very nicely why, why the modeling is, is useful. And if you do more iterations of the modeling, then uh, the fit of the contour is, is much, much better. And again, this can be extended to fancier contours. We just use the, the depth contour, which is quite, quite noisy. Thank you. <laughs> so any questions for our speaker? Yes? Maybe you mentioned this, but how long did the iterations? So um, I don't remember. So the, um, we managed to get a version of it that was sort of 10 frames per second. Uh, with a rather naive implementation. So we never tried to look into the performance that much. So my whole idea of this was to have a ge generic framework for, for this sort of tracking. So this is not the ideal solution. There are much be better papers with better results. But I just like the fact that you take all those energies and use them in a, in a nice you know, end-to-end -end, uh, framework. And actually, this is a good uh, moment to say this. Um, so the code uses PCL. It's in a separate GitHub project. And this would be quite, quite interesting to maybe merge inside uh, PCL at some point with some magic help of some magic people somewhere. All those magic people. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. <laughs>